Welcome to the Baskets of Fun Finishing Ideas video number two. This video features the 10 inch finished and 5 inch finished blocks made with the 30s fabrics. With the 10 inch finished blocks, I'm going to make a lap quilt that measures 54 and a half by 68 and a half. With the 5 inch finished blocks, I'm going to make a table topper that measures 22 inches by 22 inches. The pattern is located at the end of this video or you can get a printable version from the file section of our Facebook group called The Quilted Forest Friends. You can put your baskets of fun together any way you like, but I'm going to guide you through what I did to make my lap quilt and my table topper. The scrappy squares that separate the blocks on my lap quilt look like they were a lot of work, but they're not. I used the fusible two and a half inch grid to help the piece sections go together quickly. The first thing I did was cut up all the leftover fabric I had from making the blocks into two and a half inch squares. You'll need at least 336 squares to make the piece sections. Then I cut the fusible grid into the sections I needed. It's a little hard to see on the screen, but there are lines that are easy to see in person. First, I cut sections that were five squares wide, so I would have the full width of fabric five wide. I started with one and one third yards of the two and a half inch fusible grid. So when you sew it, it'll end up with two inch finished squares, but you start with two and a half inch on the grid. From these pieces, you need to cut six sections that are five squares by five squares. You want to cut right on the dashed lines and trim off any little excess that hangs off the edge. Otherwise, it'll stick to your iron. These five by five square pieces will make the setting squares. The next shape you want to cut kind of looks like a triangle. It needs to be five, four, three, two, one. So the first row will have five squares, second row has four, then three, two, and one. And it'll kind of look like a triangle. My last piece had six squares across, but I left it because I knew it would be perfect for cutting out these five, four, three, two, one sections. You will need a total of 10 of this shape. I used my rotary cutter to cut out these pieces, but if you prefer, you could definitely use the scissors. These five, four, three, two, one units will be the setting triangles on the sides of the quilt top. The last piece you need to cut is kind of like a pyramid. It needs to be five on the bottom and then three and then one at the top. These pyramid units will make the corners of the quilt top. I'm using this setting to finish off my 10 inch finished blocks. You could also use the same setting with your five inch finished blocks using a one and a half inch grid with one and a half inch squares. Now it's time to add the fabric squares to the fusible grid. Make sure you feel it so that you have the bumpy side or the fusible side up. If you need to have a better view of the squares, you can add a white piece of paper underneath so that the lines on the fusible grid stand out. Lay the fabric squares any way you want. Just put them randomly in place. I only tried not to have two like fabrics right next to each other. I had extra squares I had cut, so I knew I had plenty to play with. Once you have all the fabrics in place the way you want them, we're going to press the fabrics onto the fusible grid. Yes, the grid will stay in the quilt top. The grid is nice and light. It won't add a lot of extra weight to the quilt block, and it does add some nice stability to the quilt block so it doesn't stretch out of shape as it is on point. I have used this fusible grid for many years. It's one of my favorite products, and I almost always have it in stock here at the store. I also have it sized in a two inch grid that finishes at an inch and a half. I'll have a link in the description below for a video I did using that fusible grid 
to make a queen size quilt out of two inch squares. To press the fabrics into place, I've got my iron on its hottest setting and I set it right on top of the fabric. I count to five and then I move it on to the next section. Your iron might need a little more or less time depending on how hot it gets. You don't want to burn the glue off the stabilizer, but you definitely want the fabric to stick to it. So play around with it until you get it to work correctly for you. You're gonna do the same technique for all of the grid pieces. The fun thing about this technique is the fabric squares are totally random in the quilt top and there aren't any patterns that sometimes develop with other piecing techniques. Now that I have all the fabrics in place, it's time to sew these units. Using a quarter inch seam allowance, we're going to sew all the seams in one direction first. The beauty of using the grid is instead of having to pick up each of the squares individually and sew them individually together to each other, you're flipping an entire row over at once and sewing five seams at once. Plus, you don't have to worry about getting your pieces out of order or turn the wrong way. The grid really helps make this part easier. You can chain stitch these just like regular piecing. No reason to break the thread. Just keep feeding them through the machine until all the seams in one direction are sewn. On the places where there are not fabrics folded together, like this one, just stitch to the edge to get to the next section. Once all the seams are sewn in one direction, the pieces will look elongated. That is how they're supposed to look. The first three sections are done, only 17 more to go.
Before we move on to sewing the seams in the other direction, we need to clip the corners. Clip the corners with a small sharp scissors through the seam between the fabric squares. Really, you're only cutting through the stabilizer and the stitching. Clipping these corners will allow you to alternate the direction of the seams to prevent bulk. You could also tear the stabilizer as you go, but the clipping will save you time. Clipping the corners is very important and you don't want to skip this step. I save the clipping for when I'm watching TV and I can just kind of do it as I'm doing something else. Once you've clipped all those corners, it's now time to sew all the seams on the gridded fabric in the other direction. You can position seams so they alternate directions to reduce bulk. I just start sending them through the machine, cutting them off the back side, and repeating this until all the seams are sewn. Chain stitching is definitely the way to go. Once all the seams are sewn, it's time to head to the ironing board to press. When I'm pressing these, I usually start from the back side to get the small seams to go one direction, and then I turn it over and press it from the front. 
Once you've pressed all of these pieces, it's time to find our blocks, add everything together, and lay out our quilt top. The quilt will be set on point so the rows will be made diagonally and it is the same setting as the first finishing video. The only difference is the squares that set the blocks off are pieced instead of just one hunk of fabric and the setting triangles, same thing. Arrange the blocks in a 3x4 setting to distribute the styles of blocks and colors. Once you have it arranged to your liking, start sewing the blocks and setting squares and setting triangles together to make the rows. Six of the rows are pieced and the last two rows are the corners in the upper right and lower left. You're going to press towards the blocks. Once all the rows are sewn, start sewing the rows together. Once all the rows are together, you want to press it one last time so everything lays nice and flat. And then we're going to trim the edge to get a nice flat edge to add the inner border. I used my Creative Grids 12 and a half inch square ruler because it had a quarter inch marking to help me trim one quarter inch away from the edge of the points all along the side of the quilt. I only cut six to eight inches at a time just to make sure everything was lining up correctly. I've gotten this far, now is not the time to make a mistake. Here is a close up view of where I'm cutting. This is the quarter inch marking on the ruler and I'm lining it up right on these points along the edge. I sewed some of these tossed triangles in a line to make a decoration for the page in my quilt journal. Once I have the quilt top trimmed, it's time to move on to cutting the fabric I'm going to need for my inner border, my outer border, and my binding. I'm going to use the background fabric for my inner border. I'm going to cut six strips that are two and a half inches by the width of fabric. Sew all of the strips end to end and press the seams open. Measure the quilt top and then from this long strip, cut two strips that match the length of the quilt. Measuring and cutting the inner border pieces the exact length is the best way to prevent wavy borders. Find the center of the quilt top and the center of the inner border strip and then match those two pieces and then you'll match the ends, pinning as you go so that everything will lay flat and then ease the fabric in along the quilt side. Pinning will also help keep everything together so that you don't stretch one of the pieces more than you stretch the other one. I usually pin anywhere from three to five inches between the pins. I usually do the sides first and then I will use the same technique of measuring the quilt top and then cutting the length I need for the top and bottom. If you use the same technique around all four of the sides, you'll get an inner border that will lay nice and flat. Every time you add on a border piece, you will press towards that border piece. For the outer border, you'll need a one and a quarter yards of fabric and you'll cut seven strips 
that are five inches by the width of fabric. If you want to make your border a little wider than that, you'll need just a little bit more fabric. You're going to use the same technique to add the outer border strips. When I sew my outer border strips end to end, I use straight seams, not diagonal seams. This helps save fabric and, in my opinion, helps the border lay flatter than with a diagonal seam. As you add each of the borders, make sure you're pressing towards the outer border fabric. For the binding, you'll need to cut seven strips that are two and a half inches by the width of fabric. Sew them together end to end and press. Combine your quilt top with batting and backing and quilt as desired. I'm going to quilt my quilt top on my long arm quilting machine in a simple stipple design. I used white thread to match the background and for my backing I chose this fun print that looks like a crazy quilt. The binding I chose is yellow so that it matches both sides of the quilt. Now that my lap quilt is done using my 10 inch finish blocks, it's time to make my table topper with the five inch finish blocks. From the background fabric, cut one square that is 12 inches by 12 inches and 12 rectangles that are one inch by five and a half inches. If you ever run across a fabric that pulls or puckers along the edge, make small snips through the selvage along that edge to help it lay flat. You will also need to cut three strips that are two and a half inches by the width of fabric for the binding. The 12 inch square goes in the center with the blocks separated by the one and a half inch by five and a half inch rectangles surrounding it. Arrange your blocks however you like, making sure to get a good balance between the colors and the styles of blocks. I had each corner with three baskets all facing the same direction. Make two sections that have two blocks separated by a rectangle with rectangles on both ends. For these smaller blocks, I would finger press as I went along and then right before I put everything together, I did press it on the ironing board. You also need to make two sections that have four blocks separated by three rectangles. I paid close attention as I was sewing to make sure I had the blocks turned the right way so that I didn't have to get my seam ripper out. Piece the sections that have two blocks and three rectangles 
on opposite sides of the 12 inch square. Piece the sections that have four blocks separated by rectangles onto opposite sides of the center unit. You will want to pin these pieces together to make sure you match up the corners. Press it at the ironing board to make sure it lays nice and flat and then layer it with batting and backing and quilt as desired. I quilted my table topper in a one inch grid pattern. I didn't even have to mark it. I used a gridded fabric, quilted it by following the design on the back versus quilting it from the front. And then all that's left to do is to trim it and put on the binding. Yay, done. It's gonna look great in the center of a table and that 12 inch square in the middle will be the perfect place to put a centerpiece or a candy dish. My finished lap quilt measures 54 and a half inches by 68 and a half inches. And I am so happy with the way it turned out. I love all the bright colors and the cheerful designs. The yellow on the binding looks perfect from the front matching that and also looks good from the backside. The crazy quilt fabric on the back side makes it look like I have two quilts in one. The pattern is located in the files section of our Facebook group called The Quilted Forest Friends. Or you can push pause and take notes, or you could take screenshots and print at home. We hope you will hit the like button, leave a comment for us, share with your quilting friends, and subscribe. Thanks for watching and happy quilting!